The next step on my project is to try to get the DDR memory tested and to see what kind of results I find there. Is it, is it at all functional? Is it functional at slower speed? Can I run it at a pretty good speed? Uh, this is my first routing of DDR, uh, which for me was not a simple process, and so uh, I don't know what, what to expect yet. But there is a sample project in Vitus that I can use to test that DDR. So the first step in preparation of that is I did swap out. I had put in that 25 megahertz temporary oscillator for the processing system. I did pull that out. I put in the 33 and a third megahertz, which is uh, really what the, the, the design that I, I plan to use uh, is, is all centered around. Now you can use anything from a 30 up. So the 25 uh, was not gonna meet the needs and 33 is kind of the default that a lot of the other configurations are gonna assume you have and not have to change a lot of settings. So that's good, I got the 33 on and I now wanna get into the DDR testing. I've gotta get this UART functionality working so that I can have serial communication to run that Vitus application submit which command I want to, to, to use for what type of test and then see the results of the test through that serial communication. Well, the circuitry that I have in the design for this to do that essentially should also get me to the point where I have USB uh, programming capability. So I can just plug in a USB cable and from the Xilinx tools directly program that Zinc and not have to get out a separate programmer like the uh, Xilinx USB cable 2 that I've been using. So that'll be convenient. And uh, I'm running into a problem with that. So I'm just going to kind of share what I've been seeing. And I'm, I'm guessing it's either there's a, a major issue with my board or there's some silly thing that I've overlooked or, or haven't seen in documentation. So definitely looking for thoughts if any of you as you look at this say, oh yeah, I've got an idea of what's going on. Uh, so I did populate uh, these components here on the board. So I've got a USB-C connector on the left there. Uh, from it, I can pull power and drive the entire board. Uh, I do have the FT2232H that I put in off to the right and then a corresponding serial EE prom for the configuration to go with that. And all that population I think went fine. Uh, with that, there's also a 12 megahertz oscillator that I got put on the board uh, to support that. But what I'm finding now that I've gotten that done is when I connect the board, first of all, it powers fine off that USB connector, so I don't need the, the DC barrel connector uh, for power. So that's convenient. I noticed that the hardware manager in Vivado um, sees the board, you know, basically it's connecting to that 2232 and, and, and reading back the serial number information that I've configured the device with. Uh, so that all seems good, but then I get this type of a message that just says um, there's no devices detected though on that target. So that's what I've got to figure out why am I getting that. And as a reminder, again, I'm using this FT2232H. I'm using Windows 11. I've tested this on two systems. I'm using Vivado 2024.2. What I have tried 2024.1. I also tried it 2023 something. Same results. And I've tried different cables. And right now, the computer I'm on and recording this from, I'm using a USB-A to USB-C connecting to my board that's giving it power and letting me communicate with it. Now, one thing I find interesting is that in Device Manager in Windows, it just shows up as a USB serial port. I guess that the uh, the UART side of it, uh, so that I can do this uh, terminal type of communication, but I don't see any other things show up in Device Manager. Uh, for example, if I open up Device Manager of the computer I'm on right now, you know, I can come down in here and see that I have a COM10 showing up as a USB serial port. And I can go into the, uh, you know, the information about this. And again, this looks like it's just the, the UART side of it. So I can configure what speed do I want to run and things like that. But I don't see anything else that shows up in Device Manager around programming type of devices or something else that would 
tell me that it's uh, somehow a, a programming type of thing. They're all software devices and not much else that I, I know that I'm looking for or seeing anything show up as a programming device of some sort. So question is, is that normal for those of you that are, are using this uh, more recent type of setup from AMD? Uh, does that sound right? Now I can go and look at my schematic and on my schematic from the original design, I did uh, see that I was missing a couple of pull-ups I should have had. So I added those to this board uh, after, you know, of course the boards were built, but I just kind of used a bodge wire and a couple of uh, surface mount resistors and added these pull-ups. I also tweaked there's a little uh, voltage divider over here um, that's supplying this reset signal and uh, I, I tweaked that a little bit those didn't make any uh, noticeable changes in, in the functionality it was fine before but those were things I wanted to kind of uh, dial in a little bit but in the upper right of this is you know really uh, the uh, signals that would have to do with you know programming and if I go out and I look and I, I find a, an example, here's one from Phil's lab. And uh, if I zoom into those signals, you know, from this 2232 chip, basically it, it should be generating the, you know, all of these different signals that are needed for that JTAG. Uh, so TCK, TDI, TDO, TMS, et cetera. And I've compared my schematic to Phil's lab and, and uh, that seems to be in line. AMD will point you to this uh, VCK190 as the reference design for this type of a circuit. I've gone out and looked at that, and it seems like, again, it's, it's relatively the same thing as uh, Phil's lab and, and what I've got. I've looked at the, the Digilent stuff. I think the ones I was looking at, they don't give you that part of their schematic, if I remember right. Um, they kind of uh, abstract that from you, and that was back when you had to license this type of connectivity now it should be readily available at no charge for people to do what I'm trying to do. And I'll talk about that on, on the next uh, little piece of this here. Now I do know from my JTAG connection though, things work fine. So this is the schematic that shows that portion of it. You know, I've uh, used this pin layout that matches a Digilent uh, JTAG H HS3. I commented in a previous video, I did make a mistake on that though, instead of uh, two millimeter pitch, I use 2.54 millimeter pitch, uh, which is fine. It just, I can't directly plug this uh, Digilent uh, HS3 into it because it's the wrong uh, pitch for that, that header. But on my board, that would be this header right here. So I'm coming from my zinc. I'm then coming over here, coming by this. And then I have uh, inline resistors to take those signals into the different pin headers. And then I continue that routing and bring it down into really these, these locations right here on this 2232. But if I plug in up here with an external programmer, uh, everything works fine. Now, when I want to do my own thing, part of it is this configuration of an EEPROM and I am using this utility. And so this is a program FTDI from AMD and this is supposed to let you basically have your own custom programming circuit like what I've got on this board and have it be accessible and usable from uh, the Vivado tool, the hardware manager as an example. And so the way that works is you can go out and you, uh, in the, the tickle, I think is, is maybe how it's pronounced, but uh, the, from this tickle console, you can say exec and run this program FTDI. Now, if I come over to mine, um, you know, first of all, I can go to my hardware manager and I can see, can I open up, you know, I do have my board connected to this computer and I can check and see what does it show up as, and I see the board and then it says, okay, no device is connected to it. So that's not good. I'm going to close that. And this time I'll just do a open new target set of auto. And again, it'll find the 2232, I think is when this will show up. And it's reading the EEPROM because it's pulling the serial number. But uh, no matter what, even if I pick a really slow speed, it still does not show up uh, with the devices from the zinc. Okay, so that's a problem. If I come down here 
to this uh, tickle window, I can run commands and let me go grab one from my notes over here and just paste it in. So I can say, well, go ahead and read the configuration. And I can see it reads back that it was programmed to be a 2232 for that, uh, that part, serial number that I've assigned to it, and then vendor board and description I can assign. The manufacturer uh, is, is, needs to stay at Xilinx. You know, so if I want, I could try testing. Can I write to that EEPROM and update it? So maybe I give it a different version. I'll give this a four and run that. And I can hear it, you know, disconnected from, from Windows Device Manager. I hear it says it did program it. So then I want to turn around and read back and see if it, it's able to read back that configuration with the updated serial number. And it, and it does. So, you know, that, that part seems like it's working. So, you know, the connectivity from USB-C into this chip, from this chip up to the EEPROM seems fine. Um, now, I did also check what the signals look like for the JTAG signals uh, in and out of this chip. Again, it's routed up past these resistors here over to uh, the, the zinc. So I just put my scope on. I, I just grounded to, I probably grounded to this uh, corner up here and uh, just quickly checked out what these look like. And let me show you those. Uh, this is what you know my my clock looks like. Um, I don't think that looks crazy out of line. You know the the top is showing 3.267 volts, a little bit of over and under shooting, but um, I, I don't think that should be of a concern on that. The TDI looks pretty decent. The TMS I think looks decent. Now my TDO that looks a little bit messy. I mean there's quite a bit of uh, overshoot and undershoot there too much probably. And so I'll have to see if there's something I can do about that um, or not. Uh, and is, is that enough to prevent this from working? And that could be the case. Uh, definitely would look for uh, any of you that have been doing this on your own boards uh, and you look at your TDO, does it look much cleaner like one of these other waveforms? And I'm sure these are still far from perfect, but um, not as ugly as this one. So I'm kind of curious what, uh, what you're all seeing. And that could come down to be a problem in this list of, you know, signal quality. Um, maybe it's the PCB design itself. Maybe it's how I assembled it. Maybe there's something else going on that uh, was just a bad schematic uh, set up in the first place. Maybe I didn't uh, get the actual circuit built correctly. Uh, I see a lot of uh, discussion online too about having the right USB drivers you know, it seems like with the newer Vivado, it should be coming with the drivers. You know, again, it shows up as a UART in my device manager, but I don't necessarily see it show up as a programming cable or anything like that. Uh, am I missing something either driver wise or is there something else I'm supposed to be doing on the EE prom? You know, I'm just using that utility from AMD and all the, well, the documentation, there's not much, it's very uh, terse, but uh, what there is for documentation doesn't indicate that I need to do anything else besides uh, run that utility to, to configure the EEPROM. And of course, there's I'm sure other things I'm overlooking here. So definitely if any of you have done this and you've got uh, something that comes to mind that I'm not talking about or appears I missed or did incorrectly, uh, please let me know. Um, you know, what I think is okay is the JTAG to the zinc. And so I come over here, you know, I know that I can go from uh, this header and plug in an external programmer and program the zinc device without any issue. That works, that works fine. So, you know, this part of it, I'd say, okay, that by itself in isolation seems fine. And even after connecting all of this, I can still plug into that and I can program this and that, that, that is working. Uh, also, the USB to the 2232, I think, is fine. So coming into this USB, you know, it recognizes this. And then following that, I think the connectivity to the EE prom is fine because, you know, I can, I can write new configuration to it. I can read that configuration. And that's all going through this circuit here. So I think the USB-C uh, signal coming in 
getting to this, this turning around, and then accessing that serial EE prom is all good. But those are different signals than the JTAG signals that would come out of this and come up to this header over to uh, the zinc. Now something I have not tested yet is the UART aspect of this. So there are a couple of pins on this 2232 that connect to the processing system. So nothing to do with JTAG, um, but through that I should be able to uh, leverage this that's showing up in the device manager uh, to go into uh, Vitus, go into that DDR test program and uh, use it as uh, input output through that UART. And that's what I'm going to work on here coming up is to, to test that next and see if that much of this circuit works. And if so, then I'll just proceed with the DDR testing and, and keep moving. Uh, but I really would like to have the convenience of providing power to the board through this USB-C and programming through that connector and doing my uh, UART serial communication all through that one connector instead of having to mess with this uh, JTAG header up here. But that's that's where I'm at. I've uh, experimented with different you know inline resistor values and other things, and, and I'll have to see if I can somehow clean up that, that TDI um, or TDO, sorry maybe a different resistor value. I, I tried that, that didn't seem to make much of a difference. And um, I don't know if there's much else I can do there other than maybe trying to cut cut a trace and run it differently or do something like that. I, I, I'm looking for suggestions if anybody has any ideas. Uh, and that maybe is normal and acceptable. It, it could be that uh, the board itself just isn't gonna support what I need to do there. But if you have thoughts, Things that I, I could check in or uh, check into or should check into, let me know. I'll keep working here on kind of diving into some of these things that uh, could be, I guess, contributors to the problem here. And it, it very well could be something really simple that I just didn't realize I need to do uh, in this. Or it could be something major that, you know, in in the steps I've gone through the right steps, but just didn't execute the, the board design well enough or something like that um, to to make it workable. Thank you in advance for any uh, any pointers or tips, tricks any of you might have. Uh, and for those that are, are new to this, uh, hopefully you're you're getting a flavor for some of the stuff that uh, that I'm struggling with. Hopefully that's helpful. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone.